module addresses the critical importance of assessing your teammates and providing them feedback. In this module, we'll discuss the concepts of assessment and feedback and discuss the links between these processes and patient safety. We'll also discuss the peer feedback activities that occur in the IPED course. Assessment in concept is simple. It's quite simply gathering and weighing information about the nature, quality, or ability of someone or something. In practice, assessment gets more challenging. When it involves humans, it gets complicated because assessment requires judgment, and judgment makes us uncomfortable. Judging makes us uncomfortable, and so does being judged. Uncomfortable or not, if we care about our patients and what happens to them, we have to assess. We have to assess them, our patients, and their status, their progress, their response to treatments. We have to assess what's happening to them in our complex, interconnected, and interdependent world of healthcare. And we have to assess each other. If we care about our patients and what happens to them, we really don't have another choice. It's that simple. We have to assess each other. We have to monitor our own work and that of our colleagues, or we will always be working blind with no idea what is happening or what might happen to our patients. Now let's consider for a moment feedback. As frequently as you may have heard the term feedback, you may be surprised to know that the word itself is less than 100 years old. It developed originally as a term used in scientific and manufacturing processes, and quite simply, feedback is information. More specifically, feedback is information returned to something, a person or a machine, a system or a process, with the purpose of improving the performance of whatever that information is returned to. Think about it this way. In any process or endeavor, there is an intended path or outcome. This could be defined either as the place you want to end up, in other words, the outcome, or it could be the process that's to lead you to that outcome. There is also an actual path or outcome, this is where things really are. In some cases, the intended path or outcome may be identical to the actual. More often than not, it's not the same. Between the intended and the actual, there's a gap. The purpose of feedback is to narrow that gap. For healthcare professionals, this is critical. The gap between the intended and the actual is the potential for harm for our patients. A few important things to note. You can't provide feedback without assessing the situation. Assessment is what you do to monitor the process and its progress. Feedback is how you formulate your assessment into usable information and provide that information back to the system so that it can adjust and narrow the gap between the intended and the actual. In healthcare, the information you're gathering will most often be about people. And you can only improve the care of your patients by providing the information you gather to the people involved in their care. In other words, your teammates, your colleagues, and your patients. In your own programs, you will spend some time considering what makes for effective feedback and how you deliver it. For our purposes in this module, we will briefly review some of the elements first. Feedback must be goal referenced. For feedback to be meaningful between two people, they have to be talking about the same thing. Think about the previous diagram. If you don't have the same intended path in mind, you've got a problem. No amount of corrective feedback will help two people come to the same place if they're headed off into two different directions. Next, feedback must be specific and based in behavior. If someone tells you you did a lousy job, they haven't provided you with any information you can use to improve your performance. They've just made you frustrated or defensive. To be useful, they have to give you specific information about your behaviors and how they contribute to your performance. Remember, Talk about behaviors, not people. Most people want to improve and want to work with people who believe they can. If you want someone to improve, tell them how changing their behaviors can improve their performance. Don't tell them or imply that they need to be a better person. The information provided must be actionable. If someone tells you you're not tall enough to do the job, they have provided you specific information, but not information you can act on. If they point out that your performance would be improved if you were in a higher position, then you can consider ways you might accomplish that. Maybe a stool or a ladder is all you need to be world class the next time. To be useful, feedback must occur close to relevant events. 
the closer you are to a point where the difference between the actual outcome and the intended is apparent, the better able you will be to see and describe the gap. If you wait, the odds are good everyone will remember the event differently. The evidence is clear that teams in the habit of providing each other regular, consistent feedback perform the best. They develop the habit of continually monitoring and assessing each other, and they develop trusting relationships where they understand and reaffirm their commitments to each other and to the goals they share in common. In short, feedback no longer makes them uncomfortable. They view it as useful and important. This course has been intentionally designed for you to work in teams. Our purpose is to create an environment where you're learning and applying key skills and concepts in a way that requires you to work interdependently in teams. The goal is to allow you lots of opportunities to practice skills in teamwork and collaboration in the classroom, where the stakes are smaller, so that those skills are well developed and more automatic when you're caring for patients and the stakes are much, much higher. If that purpose is to be accomplished, you have to take seriously your part. You can treat iPad like any other course, where you just do your work and interact minimally with your classmates, or you can take it seriously as an opportunity to learn and to help others learn and grow. As noted previously, feedback is most effective when it is consistent and ongoing. We hope each of you will adopt the habit of asking for feedback and offering it to each other. If your team performs well, take a minute to ask why. What did you do right? Why did it work well? Take the opportunity to discuss this with each other. Ideally, the same thing will happen between you individually. The best way for you to improve your performance as an individual is to continually seek feedback from others and respond to it. Most of this sort of feedback will happen informally. We've provided you with a means of providing more formal feedback through CATME. As you may recall, CATME is a computer-based tool to allow teams to assess each other and their contribution to teamwork and then to provide feedback. CATME allows for assessment and feedback in five areas relevant for teamwork. Contributing to the team's work, expecting quality, keeping the team on track, interacting with teammates, having relevant knowledge, skills, and attitudes. CATME has been used in a variety of settings and has been validated as an effective tool for improving individual and team performance. For CATME to accomplish that end, the people using it must take it seriously. If you simply rank all your teammates the same, you not only fail to provide your teammates useful information, but you dilute the information that your other teammates are providing each other by skewing the data. When completing CATME, please remember these things. You're required to complete the process, but your score does not contribute to your grade. Whether you have the highest ratings or the lowest will not affect your grade in any way. Your responses are anonymous. The information provided to you and your teammates will be a composite of all the information gathered. No one can tell how you rated them, and you'll not be able to tell how other people responded to you. If you and your teammates take CATME seriously, it will provide you with a snapshot of how your team views you in the context of your work together. It will provide you with some suggestions of things to work on and how you might improve. Remember, the best source of information is a conversation with a colleague. If you need to put your CATME score in context, talk to a teammate. Have them help you understand your weak spots and how you might improve them. We hope you'll take the opportunity this course affords you to intentionally practice the interprofessional skills the course emphasizes, including the often challenging skills involved in giving and receiving feedback. We also hope you'll take the opportunity to develop and refine these skills in a way that will be sustainable over the course of your professional life.